What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. You guys loved part one of this video with me and Rebecca and I'm so glad, like are we not the dream team? Screw team Chayman, we should be talking about team Raymond or team Redman. Okay, they don't have the greatest ring to them, but I'm sure you guys can come up with something better. I should probably end my spiel now that has nothing to do with this video and just do the video. So these are the top 10 mysterious hidden messages found in movies part 2. Starting us off with number 10 is Batman Begins. I bloody love this Batman trilogy, like I cannot fault it at all. Like Christian Bale was impeccable and whenever I say I'm not a Marvel girl, it's because I'm a DC girl and a Batman girl just through and through. Either way, the first movie in the trilogy came out back in 2005 and during the closing scenes of the movie, James Gordon, one of the only honest cops left in Gotham, reveals to Batman that there's a new criminal on the scene. The camera then shows the audience a clear evidence baggie and inside of it the Joker's calling cards. So we know by then the Joker is coming in the sequel but if you pause it there and zoom in you'll catch something even better. The evidence baggie label shows that the evidence was signed in by someone called Jay Kerr. Jay Kerr, short for Joe Kerr, which is an alias the Joker adopted for years. So hence really the Joker has been tempting and teasing Batman to bring him down for years and come after him, longer than fans watching the movie initially thought. This one made me so excited, I was like it has to be the first one we talk about, I don't even cur. Get it? Cur. Now it's just the, this like video is just gonna be smooth sailing after that. Executed the joke, all good. <laughs> Coming in at number 9 is Jurassic Park. The original one scared the out of me when I watched it on DVD when I was young. I love Jurassic World with Chris Pratt as well, I thought it was fab. So honestly, just another banger for the list. Here we go. So the first movie in the franchise came out back in 1990, and if you haven't seen any of the Jurassic franchise, it's basically about a theme park full of cloned dinosaurs. Either way, in the first movie, the scientists thought they could curb the danger of growing dinosaurs by blocking their reproduction. And they did that by only growing female dinosaurs. Now the maths and chaos Chaos theorist Ian Malcolm warns all of them that listen, growing only females will be a major problem you guys, you need to fix that. Before he even warned them and did that, we get that same warning in a hidden message. On their ride to the island, paleontologist Alan Grant struggles putting his seatbelt on and that doesn't really seem that significant when it's happening, but if you look closer you'll realise he's struggling because he's trying to connect two female ends. Instead of giving up or swapping buckles, he just ties them up, which also also sort of foreshadows the problem will get dealt with somehow in the movie as well, just as Alan sorted it out in the beginning. At number 8 we have Robocop. So this is a really old one and admittedly I haven't even seen the movie. It came out in 1987, like a full 10 years before I was born so I feel like you guys can like cut me some slack for that. I wasn't even an idea at the time. Either way, I'm assuming a lot of you haven't seen it, so to summarise it's set in the future in a crime filled version of Detroit and it centres around Robocop who was a police officer who got killed by a gang and then revived as some superhuman cyborg. See now you don't even have to watch the movie, I just told you the whole thing, the whole plot. Need I say more? No. Either way, despite the whole religion versus science debate, and especially because the movie is about a half man, half machine thing, there are actually a lot of hidden biblical messages in the movie. Alex Murphy, the man who becomes Robocop, is literally Jesus. Think about it, he's the hero of this corrupt town, he gets killed, then resurrected, and then emerges as a saviour. At one point he even walks on water, like come on people. Jesus. More and more audience members started picking up on this link and even the director Paul Verhoeven confirmed Robocop was his vision of an American Jesus but it was meant to be just really low key. I mean if we're trying to imagine an American Jesus, I mean I don't I don't know if Robocop is the best parallel for him but I mean I definitely appreciate what, was, what Paul was trying to do. I mean good for you Paul. Filling our number 7 slot is Anchorman The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Now if you're a comedy fanatic then you've definitely seen this movie and all of Will Ferrell's movies to be honest. It came out in 2004 and if you haven't seen it, it's basically set in the 70s and it focuses on the action news format that was really popular at the time. It focuses on a TV station where Ferrell and his female counterpart clash a bunch and then funniness and drama ensues. Either way, a really funny gag was concealed in the movie that most people didn't even pay much attention to since 
since the shot itself looks really mundane. And honestly, it wouldn't really stand out to anyone who isn't a fluent Spanish speaker. Either way, in one of the scenes, Veronica Corningstone, the female counterpart, goes to a Mexican restaurant with her colleagues, and the restaurant is called Escupimos en su Alimento. I hope I said that right. Probably not, but I tried. And that sounds really delightful off the tongue. Not my tongue, but somebody else's. Except when you translate it, it means we spit in your food. There you have it. Now at number 6 is Sunshine. This movie came out in 2007 and if you haven't seen it, it basically takes place in 2057 and is about a crew of astronauts that go on a mission to try and reignite the dying sun. Now while the crew is on their way to the sun in a spaceship dubbed Icarus 2, they found the distress beacon of Icarus 1, the spaceship sent on the same mission 7 years prior, which never returned to Earth. Dun dun dun. Now the crew decide two ships are better than one and decide to board the other ship and control it as well. When they get on board Icarus 1, the crew members' flashlight beams keep shining directly into the camera and obviously by default at the audience. And each time this happens, Danny Boyle spliced in hidden pictures in the frames of the now dead Icarus 1 members. Most people didn't pick up on this, but what makes it even more creepy is the fact that pictures are all from a Hawaiian themed party that happened before their mission. That clearly crashed and burned. They're all smiling, laughing, enjoying, and it's just a really morbid parallel. And in that, Danny Boyle sort of reveals the crew's fate to us without actually revealing it to us. Creepy as hell. Coming in at number 5 is King Kong. So I feel like this one needs no explanation whatsoever because I'm pretty sure everyone has heard of King Kong, regardless of if they've watched it or not. Released in 2005, the remake pretty much smashed the box office out of the window, which was no surprise. Either way, King Kong aside, there are a lot of movies that use Morse code in them and I'm pretty sure 90% of us have no idea how to translate that shit. We just trust the subtitles are correct and that's what they're saying. And if you did that during King Kong, then you missed a major tongue-in-cheek message the director planted in there. Now right before reaching Skull Island, the SS Ventures captain intercepts a coded message talking about the arrest of Carl Denham. Now the audible Morse code part doesn't actually translate to anything about Carl's arrest. If you actually do the research, it translates to show me the monkey, which is really just a homage to the big ape himself. So think twice next time you think Think about trusting Morse code subtitles. You're probably wrong. And so am I. And it always will be, because I'll be too lazy to research it. At number four is The Social Network. This is a small one, if I'm honest, but I still thought it was pretty cool, so I was like, let me pop it in there. So if you haven't seen the movie, Are You Living Under a Rock? It came out in 2010, and it's basically the story of the founding members of Facebook and all the lawsuits they endured and how the whole thing sort of just came to be. It was directed by David Fincher, who's a self-proclaimed Fight Club lover, so because of that, there's a very clear hidden homage in the movie. When Jesse Eisenberg, aka Mark Zuckerberg, checks out Facebook on his computer, the words Tyler Durden's photos are very visible on screen. Wow, honestly, if Tyler Durden added me on Facebook, I would have slid into that inbox so damn fast. You guys won't even see me. I would have blinked and I've been in there. <laughs> Filling our number three slot is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Released in 1988, the movie was a live action animation centering around a version of Hollywood from the 40s where humans and cartoon characters just coexist. Roger Rabbit gets accused of murdering some businessman, and the plot follows Eddie Valiant, a private detective, trying to save his ass, essentially. And of course, when Roger Rabbit is involved, then our resident hottie, Jessica Rabbit, is involved as well. And despite the movie being advertised as family friendly, there's a very not safe for work scene in there that almost nobody noticed during its release. During the part where Jessica and Eddie flee in Benny the Cab, and when the cab crashes and Jessica tumbles out in her deep slit dress, her panty area is exposed and turns out she's not wearing any. When the news came out about this, it was a freaking ruckus. Within minutes of opening, it was sold out completely. And think about it, back then there were no public nip slips or anything like that, and even if there were, it was very hard to access it online. Either way, if you pause in that scene, you can definitely see her nether regions, but it's smooth like a Barbie doll, but still scandalous. Now at number 2 is Black Swan. So Black Swan came out in 2010, and it's quite a famous movie, so I feel like it doesn't need that much explanation either. Natalie Portman plays a protagonist who's a ballerina and is going for the role of the black and white swan in her ballet company's new season, where they're gonna put on Swan Lake. Love that movie. Love that. Love it. I watched the Barbie version, it was great. Now she does white swan brilliantly, but is low-key 
adept at portraying Black Swan. She starts to put more and more pressure on herself and that causes her to lose grip on reality. Now the film is essentially about Portman's total mental collapse as she strives for perfection. But during the movie's club scene where Portman's character takes acid, there are so, so many shots inserted in that scene that are too fast to see unless your finger is glued to the pause button. You can see Nina, who is Portman, being stalked by characters of the ballet behind her in one shot, including the character she plays. Another one is Nina dancing with the theatre director who isn't even at the club. The camera then follows Portman and the characters from the club into her room, where all of a sudden everyone magically becomes Portman. She gets surrounded by different versions of herself from other parts of the movie, and it's quite screwed up, but you never even see it. Thankfully though, since we're all lazy, someone slow mode the hell out of that scene and uploaded it onto YouTube so you can watch that video if you, you know, can't be bothered to play finger hockey. Which I can't. And finally, at number one is The Shining. I don't even think this film needs any introduction whatsoever, but if you haven't seen it, I don't know how. It's a horror movie that was released back in 1980 and was directed by Stanley Kubrick. Either way, the plot follows Jack Torrance, a recovering alcoholic and author who moves into the isolated Overlook Hotel with his family in order to be its off season caretaker. Despite his son having a horrible premonition about the hotel, the three move in anyway. The hotel and the people in it turn Jack into a murderous psychopath. And to help visually depict Jack's slide into insanity, Kubrick skewed the layout of the hotel big time by making it physically impossible to make. Like the hotel is geographically impossible. Fans have mapped it out in intricate detail and they found rooms that overlap, windows that shouldn't exist, illogical walls, etc. The fact the whole hotel is an illusion distorts the viewer's perception even more, like Jack himself. So while following Jack encounter all these ghosts in the hotel, we completely forget that the hotel itself defies the laws of physics completely. But I guess we're just going to sweep that under the rug. And that's all for today's video guys. I feel like I've seen all but one or two movies on this list, so I'm pretty happy about that. Pretty chuffed, I'm not going to lie. Let me know in the comments below whether you guys were aware of any of these hidden messages before this video, or were you all clueless? But anyways, as always, I've been your host Eamon Hassan, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.